We move on now to Asia. Stocks closed in negative territory today, with China markets falling to sustained gains notched in the last session as trade jitters continued to simmer ahead of a deadline when tariffs are due to take effect. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 declined 0.31% to close at 21,717.04, notching a third consecutive session of declines. South Korean stocks failed to hold on to early gains with the Cosby closing lower by 0.32% at 2,265.46, while in Australia, the S&P ASX 200 edged down by 0.43% to end at 6,183.40 as most sectors closed lower. Meanwhile, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index fell 1.08%, extending the previous session's losses with the heaviest decline seen in the energy and real estate sectors. On the mainland, the Shanghai Composite tracked lower once again, falling 0.94% to close at 2,760.59 after recording late gains in the previous trading session. The smaller Shenzhen Composite suffered a heavier drop, closing down by 1.96%. And away from the markets and back here in Africa, a group of 10 African nations, including some of the continent's rising economic stars, will fall $1 trillion short of the infrastructure financing required to meet UN development goals by 2040. And that's according to a report by the Global Infrastructure Hub of the G20 Wealthy and Developing Nations. The report exposes the challenges facing one of the world's least developed regions, but it also highlights the opportunities for investors willing to take the plunge. The GIH report focuses on Morocco, Ethiopia, Ivory Coast, Senegal, Egypt, Ghana, Tunisia, Benin, Guinea, Guinea, and Rwanda. All participants in the G20's Compact with Africa initiative, which aims to channel investment to the continent. To keep pace with success stories such as Vietnam in terms of developing roads, railways, airports, seaports, electricity, water, and physical telecommunications infrastructure, these nations will require investments of $2 trillion through 2040. Meeting the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, which call for universal access to power and water by 2030, will require $383 billion in additional investment, the study found, bringing the total to around $2.4 trillion. And cement maker Lafarge Wholesome has appointed a new manager for its Middle East Africa business, a week after saying French prosecutors would investigate predecessor Lafarge's essay over payments to militants to guard a factory in Syria. Chief Executive Jean Genet continued his reshuffle of bosses at the world's biggest cement maker by naming another manager from his ex-employer, building materials maker Sika. Mejan Kudovic, who joined from Sika in March as head of marketing and innovation, will run the Middle East Africa business. Junic has also enlisted former Sika managers Jeremy Gentoso and Mario Gross to run the company's U.S. cement and Malaysian business, respectively. Lafarge Holzem has cited challenging conditions in countries including Algeria, Iraq and Nigeria as hurting its business in the region, which in the first quarter reported fallen sales and operating profit. And in Morocco, economic growth there slowed to 3% in the second quarter of 2018 after 3.2% in the first quarter. Growth is expected to remain flat at 3.2% in the third quarter, with agricultural output dropping 2.6%. Agricultural activity rose 3.1% in the second quarter, while non-agricultural sector growth slowed to 3% compared to 3.3% the previous quarter. Manufacturing growth was 2.9% in the second quarter, up to 2.3% in the same period last year. Food prices lifted inflation to 2.6% in the second quarter, up from 2.1% in the previous quarter. Exports rose 13.9% thanks to an increase in demand from the Eurozone countries. The central bank forecast economic growth of 3.6% in 2018, based on expectations of a series harvest of 9.82 million tons.
and Kenya's private sector activity grew at a slower pace in June, hit by slower expansion in output and new businesses with higher food and fuel prices posing a challenge to consumers. The market Stambika uh, Bank Kenya Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing and Services fell to 55.0 in June from 55.4 in May. Economic activity has picked up this year after political unrest and drought cut growth last year to its lowest level in more than five years. And the Kenyan economy is forecast to expand by 5.8% this year from 4.9% in 2017. Uncertainty has subsided after President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition leader Raylan Odinga reconciled in March and pledged to unite the country after last year's hotly contested elections. Survey compiler Market says food and fuel prices have risen during the month, leading to the higher prices being passed to consumers. And after the break, we'll take a look at the South African PMI. Details in a moment. Do stay with us.